Hello, and welcome to Jolene Knits A Lot. This is my show about knitting and crafting and the things I get up to here in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. How are you doing? It's the end of February, and around here it's starting to, we're starting to get like the vague feeling of spring. The days are a little bit longer, we're getting a little bit more sunshine, and um, I'm starting to feel like we're out of the depths of winter and sort of moving towards spring, so that's super exciting. Uh, I have a couple of finished objects to share with you, and then I'm going to jump right into a book review. Um, last week, I received a book that I have been super excited about ever since I heard about it on the author's Instagram, and it does not disappoint. So let's get started with some finished objects. The first thing I have is this shifty that I had almost finished last week. It's sort of too bad that I... Um, didn't really finish it up because all I had to do was the seam. Let me show it to you, not on me. This is my, I don't know how, how many shifts I have made. I have knit several of these. This one's a little bit special because I purchased the yarn at the Spin Cycle shop when I was there in the fall with a good friend. So this is what it looks like, not on me. And this is such a popular pattern for very good reason. It's really easy to knit. Um, you get to do color work with slip stitches as opposed to stranded color work. And so that makes it a little bit easier and more approachable if you're new to color work. Um, you get to knit it <clears throat> starting at this corner and working down and around and then seam it at the end. The color shifting also helps move you along because as the colors shift, you can't wait to see what's gonna happen next. This shift cowl, though, is quite different from the first shift cowl that I knit in the sense that my gauge is very different. This one is much looser, and I'm not sure what has happened in the years since I knit my first shift cowl to loosen me up in the uh, mosaic knitting department. But um, it's, again, these cowls by Andrea Mowry and many other designers are super easy to style because you just sort of pop it on. Here, let me show you. You just sort of pop it on and it sits where it sits. It keeps you cozy. You don't have to fuss with it because it's not going anywhere. Um, this one, I chose three different um, colorways that had pinks in them. And I can show you a picture of those colorways here while they were still in the skein. And I really like how it turned out. I'm a big I do like pinks uh, and blues. And so it's nice to have those two options in my wardrobe now. My original shift cowl was in the blues um, end of things. Uh, so yeah, this is my latest shift cowl. And again, this one's special because I got the yarn at the Spin Cycle store and I was shopping with a dear friend. So it has lots of memories tied into it. Um, I have one other thing that's off my needles to share with you. And that's a pair of socks. The last few years, I have made little monthly knit-alongs for myself. One year it was dishcloths, one year it was sock tubes. This year I'm working through some stash that I have of sport weight sock yarn, self-striping, that I received in a club last year. So I have enough to knit a pair of socks every month. And my February uh, socks were this super fun colorway. These are all, um, all my sport weight yarns are from Knitspin Farm. They are a Targi sport bait and I love it. I love knitting with this yarn. Um, it's just got a really nice hand. It's soft and the colors are so much fun. This one is named after a goat on the Knitspin Farm farm. Her name is Joy and uh, I love how this is sort of a very subtle rainbowy kind of a yarn. I just knit this from the top down as a tube, I knit the toe and then I cut in um, an afterthought heel and you can see how this heel ends on this bright blue and so does this one. So they're very matchy matchy and I have a pair of socks. I tried to use up as much of this yarn as I could so I knit quite tall socks and I think um, I'm looking forward to giving these a try. I'm not sure if they're going to be for me or for someone else or if they'll just go in the box of socks. I have been wearing through some of my socks lately. Um, and I think that's just a function of the fact that I have a lot of hand knit socks, but I tend to wear the same ones all the time. Do you do that? Um, 
a couple of my favorite pairs now have worn out on the bottom. And for me personally, everybody's different, but I wear my socks out here at the ball of the foot, right here underneath the ball of the foot. That's where mine wear out the most. I know some people will wear out their socks at the heel or maybe at the back, but for me, it's right here. And it tends to be not in one spot. It tends to be sort of across the whole bottom of the ball of my foot because I wear the socks on both feet, I guess. Um, so I have a couple of pairs of socks that are almost worn through. And so maybe um, I will introduce these ones into rotation. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I think they're super cute. And I'm also sort of looking forward to see what year and I have stashed away from merch. I can't remember. Um, but on the topic of socks, I received a book that I've been, been waiting for for a very long time in the mail last week. It was released on February 13th and I received it on February 13th because I took the initiative and pre-ordered it. I knew I would be very interested. And that is this book, The Sock Project. It's a book by Summer Lee. I really, really enjoy Summer Lee's Instagram feed and now her YouTube channel. Um, she has a great aesthetic. The colors that she chooses for her socks, as you can see just by the front cover, are just, they're so interesting and unexpected and pretty and very much um, the sorts of colors that I like. Um, and so that to me is part of the inspiration. You can see on the back cover also, there's even more socks. So I really enjoy her photography on Instagram. I really enjoy the um, sock patterns she's already put out because I find them to be often unexpected in her color choices, but also like just the types of socks that she has put out. Often she, she does color work socks, she does cabled socks. Um, her socks have an array of sizes as well. And so when I knew that she was putting out a sock book, I was excited. This, book to me reads a lot like the Elizabeth Zimmerman books. You feel like a friend is talking to you. You really get a sense of the author's sense of humor and her quirky personality. Um, and she seems in reading the book, she, you get the same sense that you get from watching her on her Instagram channel or her YouTube channel. And I really, really appreciate that. This book has got a lot going on for sock knitters. If you were a beginner sock knitter, I feel like this book would be a great introduction for you. She really does walk you through some of the basics in terms of what types of yarn you want, what types of needles you could use, and some very basic sock patterns that get you um, introduced to how socks are constructed. I've been test driving some of the basic sock patterns from this book. And I really like the way they're laid out. There are lots of pictures with descriptions under the pictures to describe each of the techniques. And she um, injects her sense of humor into all of the knitting too. So you don't feel like you're being um, taught, but that you're being um, sort of led by a friend. The basic socks, um, as I said, there's five of them, top down and toe up. So I plan on knitting not all of them, but quite a few of them, just to give them a try and see if there are techniques that she is describing in the book that I'd like to incorporate in my sock knitting. She also has um, chapters on how to care for your socks. And then she jumps into different styles of socks. So chapter five is on striped socks. And I am a fan of a horizontal stripe. So I am looking forward to trying out a couple of the sock patterns in this section. She has a great pattern for a simple pair of socks where you use up all sorts of different um, scraps, small amounts of yarn to make a full set, a uh, full set of striped socks. And she talks about how she weaves in her ends as she's knitting. And she uses techniques that I have known about, but she employs them in a way that are just so common sense, but so they just make so much sense. And I really like the way that she has um, described that in this book. And that's something that I'm gonna be taking home with me too. I really like her um, descriptions on how to avoid jogs in her striped socks. And so I will, you'll, you'll be seeing me in the next few months working through several of these patterns. 
Each chapter starts with a simple, the simplest pattern and then progresses through the chapter with more complicated patterns. So in the stripe section, there's a simple stripe sock and then slightly more complicated patterns throughout the chapter. Chapter six is socks with fades, which is a lovely chapter. I don't know if I will be knitting socks with fades. Fades aren't really my thing, but she does a really, really great job of describing how to go about it and how to not have a very obvious fade. It makes a lot of sense the way it's described. Chapter seven is ribbed socks, which I think we all know what a pain knitting rib socks is, but I will be giving it a try. Summer has talked me into it. She has some really lovely color block socks. She talks about how to avoid getting the pearl blips when you're changing colors in a ribbed sock. And she also has um, a pattern for a thicker pair of socks. In this case, DK weight. And you could use a DK weight um, sock yarn, or you could use two strands of the fingering weight sock yarn held together. Chapter eight is thick socks, where she uses, again, thicker yarns or yarns held together to create cozy house socks. Those would knit up so quickly. Um, she's got a whole section on textured sock patterns, which I'll be having a look at. lace socks. It's been a while since I've knit lace socks, but I'm telling you, Summer's talked me into it. The way that this pattern book is laid out is just so appealing. And like I said, I just love the colors that she uses. They're just, they're often really interesting and unexpected, like mixing a neon yellow with a warm peachy pink, or um, pinks and reds are a big fa uh, favorite of Summer Lee. Now we get to the colorwork socks. This is chapter 11, colorwork socks, and I'll be knitting a few of these ones. These little flea socks here, you better believe I'm gonna be knitting a few of those. I really love these ones. And I think I may culminate my sock, Summer Lee sock knitting project with these beautiful colorwork ones. She really, um, is an advocate for using small amounts of sock yarn that you have lying around, extra from other patterns maybe, um, to create these socks. And she really does use up all of the yarns that she has. If you watch her YouTube channel, she'll show the little bits of ends and pieces of yarn colors that she really likes, that she will pull out and mix and make beautiful color work socks, even if it's just a hint here at the toe or a little bit on a folded cuff. Chapter 12 is cabled socks. And there's a couple of patterns there that I will be trying also. I, overall, this book is just a delight. There are um, multiple, multiple patterns that I'm going to be knitting from this book. The back of it says it's got 25 different patterns. Now, I don't know that I'll be knitting all of them, but I'm definitely going to be taking a crack at most of them. And the other thing that I didn't show you was that almost all of the patterns in this book are sized from a kid or toddler to extra large. And that includes a finished sock measurement around your foot of um, starting at five to six inches or 13 to 15 centimeters at the smallest end to 10 inches or 25 centimeters at the largest end. I like to, I sort of fall in the middle there. I tend to knit um, the medium size. So I knit a 64 stitch sock, um, but there are many different options for different sized feet, which is also helpful. Summer talks about um, sizing socks to your feet and how to achieve a good fit. And I think that I could use the numbers from the fingering weight sock patterns to use some of my heavier weight yarns, such as my, um, sport weight sock yarn. So we'll see if I get that utilized as well. I will be knitting some DK socks and I probably will be holding some fingering weight double too to create either a marled look or um, a thicker sock weight. So I'm super excited to get like really into this sock book. And I think you'll be seeing me talking about sock patterns from this book a lot over the next few months. But let me show you what I've been working on. The first pair of socks I've cast on from this book is Basic Socks number one. 
Summer says it's her favorite. So I thought, why not give it a try? It's knit top down. It's got a two by one rib, which means two knit stitches and one purl stitch. Um, a short little leg, a heel flap and gusset, and a toe. I tried to harness colors, Summer's love of color by popping in uh, an extra colorful toe, but I did let my older daughter pick the color. So this is the first one, and I've cast on the second one. And again, harnessing, this is the second sock, harnessing um, Summer's use of scrap yarns. I have been using up some little bits and pieces. Um, this was a end of a, it might be leftovers from another sock that I've knit. But anyway, I'm going to have um, lots of leftovers that I'm going to be using. In fact, I have a bag, a Ziploc bag, tucked away in my stash um, of Tuku fingering leftovers. When I was knitting, I'm not sure if they're the leftovers from some socks that I've knit in the past or a sweater, maybe the flea cardigan. Anyway, um, you probably also have some solid color odds and ends lying around. And so I've tried to use those, or I plan to use those, in the little color work features that you see um, in all of these socks. Summer is really great at telling you how much sock yarn you need um, for the different um, patterns that she's included. And I just wanted to look up one in particular. It is a color work one. Talk amongst yourselves while I find it. Here it is. The classic flea stitch socks. So I think these socks, you could use very, very small amounts of different colors. Um, and that's my plan. I just want to use up leftovers. So for this pair, as an example, um, she tells you that for the main color in my size, which is a, a medium, a 64 stitch sock, I have a lady size eight foot for reference. So I would be using, let me just see. Okay, so the main color, I would need um, 104 yards of the main color, which is mm, maybe about 25 grams, not very much. Um, for the contrast color in the heels, cuffs, and toes, I would need about 32 yards, which is not very much. And then for the flea design, or the little flecked colors, I would need again about 32 yards. So small amounts of, yar of yarn can go a long way if you're knitting color work socks like these. So then I have cast on another pair of socks from this book, um, partly because I have a volleyball tournament coming up this weekend and I know I'm gonna be sitting in a noisy gym for quite a long time. So I thought if I had a couple of different socks on the go, that would probably serve me well. So the next pair of socks I'm knitting is again, a very basic pair of socks. This time I'm going to be doing um, an afterthought heel and I'm going to be doing a folded cuff. So this is, this is the very beginning that I have. I'm using Tuku fingering. And so this um, like minty color will be the main color of the sock, but I have little balls left over. So I have used the gold color as the folded inside. And I'll be honest with you, I knit this, I picked up the stitches to knit together for the folded cuff. Um, and I didn't like how I did it. I had knit a few rounds and it was quite bulky. So I ripped it out and I tried it again. And I'm much happier with my pickup this time. It's quite clean, I think. And then my, my plan, my yarn's over there. My plan is to use like a limey acid green for the heels and the toes. So this is my main color. I have a little pop of gold in the middle and then some um, contrast color heels and toes. So this is another basic sock from um, Summer's book. And then the last basic sock I'm gonna be knitting is the Flegal heel. That's a toe up um, sock. That's, again, you can introduce colors in different ways. Um, but those are the sort of basic socks that I wanted to familiarize myself with before I tackled some of the other fun patterns in the book. So I've already got two patterns on the way um, and I'm really, I just enjoy the aesthetic of the book, the colors that she uses, and it makes me want to mix colors in a different way too. So in, in a lot of ways, it's a very inspiring book for me. Um, 
I know this book is sold out in a lot of places, but I believe they're doing another printing of it. And if you can get your hands on it and you're a sock knitter, I would totally recommend it. It's just a beautifully laid out book um, with lots of just really interesting um, tips and tricks on how you can achieve really good socks for yourself. I do have one project that isn't a sock this week. Thank goodness for a little variety. <laughs> But that's my beige cardigan. Now, I think I've been talking to you a little bit about this sweater. I knew I wanted to knit a beige cardigan and I was really worried that the knitting of it would not be very interesting for me. Um, but I really wanted the finished project. I really wanted a beige cardigan just because I think it'll be so wearable um, and just really practical. I had chosen the Eva cardigan by petite knits and I'll show you a picture uh, here of what that looks like on the pattern page and this pattern to me is not served very well by the picture like I really like the fit and the styling of it I think it looks really great on her and it certainly was enough to make me want to buy the pattern but once I got knitting it, it there were so many interesting um, techniques in terms of how the sweater is shaped that I really just got sucked in and I've been knitting on this sweater like crazy. I'm using some San Juan Woolworks yarn. It's called Spy Hop, and it's a blend of two different sheep wools together. It's a little bit rustic, um, but I don't find it super itchy. It's not the softest wool, but it's also not like lopy level uh, rustic, if you know what I mean. Let me show you how this sweater is constructed. You cast on across the edge of the shoulders and you use little increases here and here to create the back of the sweater. There's a band here um, of straight stitches. So you knit, a f you knit three stitches and then do an increase, work across. So that happens on both sides and you knit down um, the sweater the back till about here. And then you flip it around and you pick up some stitches on the front side. So along that little strip of straight stitches, you pick up some, you pick up a bunch of stitches and you knit down on one side. And then you pick up stitches across the top of the arm side and then you work the whole front and you do the same on the other side. So basically you've got like this much going on and then this much going on and then you knit down all together with some increases in the front for a v-neck it is it was a really really interesting way of getting this sweater started and i think has made for a really beautiful armhole check that out so this was knit i'm not going to kind of seamlessly because you just pick up the stitches i really didn't I didn't seam anything. There was a lot of um, knit this much, cut your yarn, start again over here, pick up stitches, knit, um, pick up stitches. So there was a lot of picking up of stitches, but not a lot of seaming. In fact, no seaming. And it has created this really beautiful set in sleeve. Look at that. It's just amazing. So I have been knitting away. Um, I knit the whole yoke of the sweater. And then when I had run out of yarn, I went back and I knit the sleeves, which are, um, I would say a fairly full sleeve, which is what I'm looking for. Like this is a cardigan. I want it to fit over top of things. So I wanted it a little bit bigger. There's the other sleeve. And now I'm just working down the body of the sweater. It has been just, um, let me tell you, the beginning of the sweater was like reading a page turner, a thrilling book. Um, I was just hooked and I just wanted to see how this was gonna all come together and, and look. And I'm so pleased with how it is. This is the Eva cardigan. And if you're looking for a V-neck cardigan, I highly recommend it. Um, now I haven't completed it, obviously. I've got um, this much in this yarn of this ball. Uh, I'm gonna be working straight down the sweater. Uh, this sweater is a slightly different than um, other patterns that I've seen. Oftentimes they have you measure from the armpit down 
for the length of the body, but for this sweater, I'm measuring from the top neck down for the total length before I start the ribbing. So I have, um, oh, I probably have another three inches or so left before I start the ribbing, give or take. And then it's like three and a half inches of two by two rib. So that won't be as fun. But once that's all done, I'm going to be picking up a button band and I'll be almost done. This sweater has really um, come together so nicely. Um, there isn't a lot of finishing work to be done. I've been weaving, I often weave in my ends as I go so that I don't have things left over. And also as I'm knitting, it's nice to have the little ends sort of woven in so that I don't have the holes or the gaps in where the um, balls would have met. So like really, I cast this on last week. It's been, no, not last week, after the last time we spoke. So it's been two weeks of knitting and it's really come together very quickly. Partly I think because I was so interested in how that top yoke was coming together that I was just knitting it any moment I could, ha I could find. Um, I suspect I could have a finished sweater by the next time we meet, which is so exciting for me, especially because I was sort of dreading the knitting of this because it's beige and I thought, mm. um, but I have to say, I'm really enjoying it. Um, it is knit back and forth because it's a cardigan. So I'm knitting a row and then purling a row that doesn't seem to be bothering me too much. I know some people really, really dislike purling. Um, I'm sort of neither here nor there. On It is what it is, sort of a necessary evil. I don't mind it. I'd rather knit a row and purl a row than do a lot of ribbing. Ribbing to me is a bit more tedious, but again, it's a necessary evil. And I can't wait to show you how this comes together and what buttons I pick. Um, buttons can be a tricky thing to add to a cardigan. And I tend to buy a bunch of buttons to have on hand for when I need them. Um, last Christmas, not this Christmas, but the Christmas before, I had made my dad um, a really lovely cardigan sweater, which I'll post a picture of here. And I had bought several different um, sets of buttons for that one because I wasn't sure what color would be best. And so I do have some buttons in my stash, which I think will look really great on this sweater. I think I'll probably be choosing something that's either wooden or like a horn kind of color. Um, but I'll let you know when I've made that decision. And that's all that I've had on my needles this past couple of weeks. It's been a really fun um, couple of weeks discovering a pattern that is more interesting than I anticipated. That was, that was a surprise and a delight. And then getting this sock book that I've been really looking forward to um, and just diving in and really enjoying the writing and um, the color inspiration and the patterns. So you can look forward to seeing more patterns from this book on my needles in the next couple of weeks. I hope that for the next couple of weeks, you have time to do the things you like to do, whether that's diving into a pattern that you um, are really enjoying right now or picking up a pattern book that uh, is new to you or revisiting one that, of your favorites. I know I plan on knitting a lot. I'll see you soon. Bye.